The NBA draft lottery just happened last week, and we saw the Atlanta Hawks jump from the number 10 projected pick all the way to number one overall. For the Hawks, it's a blessing to have an opportunity to draft the next superstar of the league. But that's not the first time we've seen this happen. Here in this video, I'll go over five different times where NBA teams have jumped to number one overall and what happened to those teams. The NBA draft lottery has existed since 1985, where it sparked controversy as soon as it was born. David Stern got the Knicks to draft Patrick Ewing with the number one overall pick in 1985, and everybody has something to say about that frozen envelope. But the Knicks only jumped up two spots, going from number three to number one. It was what happened in the next year's draft that was even crazy. Before we talk about the 1986 NBA draft, we have to go all the way back to seven years ago. In 1979, the San Diego Clippers traded their 1986 first round pick to the Philadelphia 76ers for none other than Joe Bryant, Kobe Bryant's father. Nobody thinks anything of it at the time, as the pick is for 7 years in the future. Fast forward 7 years, and the Clippers end up with the 6th worst record in the league, putting them in the newly created draft lottery. The lottery happens, and the Clippers end up with the number 1 overall pick. But hold up, they traded that pick 7 years ago to the 76ers, so the 76ers end up with the number 1 pick after finishing with an outstanding 54-28 and record. The Sixers are in win now mode, and this draft class was disappointing compared to the past drafts, so they trade the pick to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Roy Henson and Cash. The Cavaliers end up drafting Brad Daugherty with the number one overall pick, who turned out to be a solid player, making five all-star teams, averaging 19-9 for his career. They also drafted Ron Harper with the eighth pick, a pick they bought for $500,000 since their previous owner traded all their picks. Unfortunately. Injuries in his back cut Brad's career short, limiting him to only 8 seasons and the Cavs traded Ron Harper shortly after a great rookie season. For a number 1 overall pick that jumped up 5 spots and was traded twice, this 1986 draft was a hectic one. Fast forward 7 years later and we come across another team that jumped up the draft lottery. The Orlando Magic had entered the Shaquille O'Neal era in the 1992-93 season, drafting him with the number 1 pick in the last draft. They showed a ton of improvement going from 21 and 61 to 41 and 41, almost making the playoffs. With a 1.52% chance of getting the number one pick for this year, the Magic began scouting for players that would be available around the 10th pick. But it turns out luck would be on their side, because they would jump from the projected 11th pick all the way to number one. Magic fans rejoiced as they had a chance to pair their generational superstar with another superstar in the number one overall pick. They used that pick to select future Hall of Famer Chris Webber, but would shortly trade him to the Golden State Warriors for the third overall pick Penny Hardaway and three future firsts. The Magic paired Shaq and Penny together to create this dynamic duo that would make the NBA Finals two years later, but would get swept by the Rockets and would later not re-sign Shaq. The Warriors on the other hand, struggled coaching Chris Webber and Chris Webber hated the team, so he became a free agent after his first season there due to an escape clause in his contract and joined the Washington Bullets. He went on to have a Hall of Fame career with the Wizards, Kings, Sixers, and Pistons. So even though it didn't lead to a championship for either team, it showed a lot of teams that it wasn't important to tank for the first pick, because it's not always guaranteed. The next time something like this would happen would be 15 years later. The Chicago Bulls have been a mess ever since the Jordan era. They tried so hard to find the next Michael Jordan, but that was impossible, as they drafted bust after bust each year. The 2008 Chicago Bulls had just finished with a 33-49 record, having a super young roster that consisted of rookie Joakim Noah and Luol Deng, while also having that veteran leadership in Ben Wallace and Larry Hughes. The Bulls had a 1.7% chance to get the number one overall pick this year, and because it hadn't happened in so long, it seemed like jumping up in the draft was not going to happen. But lo and behold, the NBA wants to get this team back on track, so they're gifted with the number one pick for the 2008 draft. Who's in this draft you might ask? Oh, just the youngest MVP in league history and the Chicago native Derrick Rose. Rose took the league by storm, winning Rookie of the Year honors and winning MVP in his third season at 21 years old. From this jump to number one overall, Rose led the Bulls to their best season since Jordan, having a 50-16 record and hopefully leading the Bulls to the NBA Finals. But Tom Thibodeau loves to abuse his players and play them 40 minutes a night when they don't have to so Derrick Rose tears his ACL late in a playoff game that would derail his career. It sucks to see that if Thibodeau just pulled Rose at the game, 
we could have seen a greater career from the former number one overall pick. We go to three years later to one of the most stacked draft classes of all time in 2011. But before I get to the draft, we gotta backtrack a little bit. Later on in the 2010-2011 season, the Clippers trade Baron Davis and their first round pick to the Cavaliers for Mo Williams and Jamario Moon. The Clippers wanted to get Davis's contract off the books as it was too much and he was looking past his prime, hence why they needed to add the first round pick. But what they didn't know was how valuable that first round pick would actually be. The Clippers had the 8th best odds at getting the number 1 pick, having a 2.8% chance. But of course, in storyline fashion, the Clippers pick jumps up to number 1 in the most stacked class in recent history. But remember, the Clippers traded the pick to the Cavs earlier in the season to get rid of Baron Davis. So now, the Cavs have the number 1 pick as well as the number 4 pick just the year after losing the hometown kid, LeBron James. The Cavs picked Kyrie Irving with the number 1 pick and Tristan Thompson with the number 4 pick. And these picks turned out great. Yes, the Cavs could have drafted Klay Thompson, Kawhi Leonard, or Jimmy Butler with the number 4 pick instead of Tristan Thompson, but who knows if those players turn out the way they are now. But that's not the end of the story. The Cavaliers have yet to do anything with Kyrie at the helm. So 3 years later after they selected him, they get the number 1 pick again in the exact same fashion. The Cavs jump up from number 9 to number 1 select Andrew Wiggins with the first pick, and trade him to the Timberwolves for prime Kevin Love. Kyrie Irving has turned out to be one of the greatest guards of this generation, and is the holder of one of the most iconic shots ever in basketball history, while Tristan Thompson was a good role player for the Cavs. With the past teams I've mentioned, they can never make that jump to a championship with their number one pick, but this one did. The Cavaliers won the 2016 NBA championship thanks to LeBron James coming back, and Kyrie Irving hitting a sidestep 3 in game 7 to ultimately seal the deal. So let's recap. The Cavs got the 2011 number 1 overall pick from a trade with the Clippers that was supposed to be around 8 or 9. They select Kyrie Irving with that pick. 3 years later, the Cavs get the number 1 pick again that's supposed to be 8 or 9 again and they use that to get Kevin Love, a key piece in their 2016 championship roster. That's what's supposed to happen when your team jumps up to number 1 overall. The draft lottery has been one of the best things the NBA has done, preventing teams from tanking to get the number one pick. And there's a lot more instances where teams have jumped up in the draft lottery, just not to number one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. All that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.